But let me start with Indigenous recognition. If you were watching yesterday, you would have heard my surprise that this bold promise by the government to take this issue to a referendum had not gone to the coalition party room. This is a complex issue and there are divided views within government that was always going to generate some controversy. It would have been far wiser to give the party room a heads up at least rather than just let them hear about this in the news yesterday. And already, as you've heard here on Sky News this morning, plenty of Liberal MPs are expressing angst, both publicly and privately. This is going to be a complicated and passionate debate, but an important one. To distill it down as much as possible, let's break it into two crucial parts. One is simply recognising Indigenous people in the Constitution. This is the least contentious part of the process. All sides of politics will agree to do this, at least in a minimalist way. It's not as simple as it sounds because it involves a bit of a constitutional tidy-up, but it's eminently achievable. However, the second part of the puzzle is the so-called voice to parliament, a mechanism for Indigenous people to provide advice to government on issues affecting them. Now, there's been a lot of fear-mongering on this idea, and it's flared up again last night. It depends exactly what uh, Ken is proposing. Now, today he just outlined a few basic concepts. He hasn't gone into the detail of this. Now, if there's a, a few minor changes to the Constitution, I know there's some uh, references to, uh, you know, to Aboriginals in there at the moment. Maybe they need to be taken out. I, think there's, I don't think they're harmful there, but maybe they could be taken out. If it's some reform like that, I think, yes, they could. But I think if we go down the track of trying to have this idea of this de facto third chamber, I think that will struggle to get unanimous support. Now, Kelly is not the only one to use this third chamber phrase. Malcolm Turnbull and Tony Abbott both used it, for instance. It's a furphy. It's misleading, it's divisive, and it's designed to kill off the voice idea. No one has suggested a third chamber of parliament or an Indigenous veto on legislation. The idea is just to formalise the sort of advice governments already get on Indigenous issues. Labor and Liberal governments have had Aboriginal advisory councils. This idea is just to enshrine such a body either in the Constitution or under legislation and make sure that it's truly representative. There are myriad options available, which is why the debate is important. But to call this a third chamber is an attempt to frighten people, to exaggerate the proposal in order to kill it off. And people who want to create a scare campaign to deny a reasonable voice to Indigenous Australians ought to have a good think about their actions, their motives and the possible consequences. Calm down, cool down, avoid the emotive language and see if this thing can get done. And also watch out for Labor and the left on this issue too. They were late to the voice idea. It actually came from conservative thinkers and clear-thinking Indigenous leaders. So don't be put off by their sloganeering and the leftist emotive posturing. This is a sensible idea that came from pragmatic people. It is worthy and deserving of calm consideration. Ignore the shouters, the chanters, the fear-mongers and the grandstanders. Let's just try to discuss pragmatic ways to right historic wrongs.